Hello, as you can see, I'm back in New York City, and today we're going to see some exhibits starting in Soho, and then we're going to work our way down to Tribeca. This is the exhibit that I've been looking forward to the most. This is Austin Lee's second exhibit with Jeffrey Deitch Gallery. And if you're not familiar with his work, he utilizes software, specifically virtual reality, to create first a digital version of his work that he then translates into these real world objects on canvas or sculpture that you see. And I love this exhibit because it really shows off Lee's range of talents. You know, you see everything from his video art above to sculpture to his airbrush paintings. And the main source of inspiration for these works is the human psychological experience. And you can see this through this very apparent symmetry. And this is a reference to the Rorschach test. Lee states, In my lifetime, I've seen computer software and hardware innovations change the way humans interact at a pace that's hard to keep up with. The images and fantasies of others have become intertwined with our lives in a way that influences our own perception of reality. With each new tech expansion comes both positive and negative side effects. Isolation mixed with mediated interaction, subversive advertising, facing overwhelming tragedy alone and through a screen. These are just some of the confusing, disorienting experiences that are hard to adapt to and highlight our need for authentic connection. Another thing that I find really interesting about Lee's works are that while his color palette is anything but traditional, the composition of his works have really strong nods to Vermeer in terms of body language, especially this work here, as well as the inclusion of elements that you can find in your typical still life, such as, you know, a vase of flowers on a table. We we're actually really lucky to be graced with the presence of Austin Lee, that's him right there, popping into the gallery on a Saturday. We're now in Tribeca to see an exhibit at James Cohen's new space at 52 Walker Street. It's a space that's right above David Warner's new project space that opened earlier this year. And we're going to see an exhibit by Christopher Myers titled The Hands of Strange Children. The show consists of these beautiful tapestries in addition to these stained glass works. And there are six stained glass panes, each one tell a narrative of the lives and the legacies of six different revolutionary prophets. And each of these figures have significance to Myers because of how they responded to colonization. And each is iconic, and yet they all failed to achieve their aims. However, by highlighting their efforts, this still serves a purpose to Myers of helping, quote, find new ways to define freedom and dignity within these systems.
This large-scale tapestry in the back of the gallery is in reference to Sarah Forbes Bonetta, who was the goddaughter of Queen Victoria. Similar to the Six Prophets, Bonetta is, quote, envisioned as an icon that stands at the intersection or collision of multiple narratives of slavery, colonization, civilization, and culture. Meyer states, her place as an in-betweener, someone not fully home, neither here nor there, presages a lot of folks in the world subsequently. For all of the diaspora globally, we live on the hyphen, like Sarah Forbes Bonetta, in the space between here and there. The next stop of the day is to the whole gallery to see an exhibit by Dan Atto. Depression, a feeling of being overwhelmed, those are all things that I'm sure we can relate to when the days are short and dark and cold like they have been, especially if you live in New York. In this exhibit, Atto provides a literal and figurative light to the darkness by A, providing us with literal light through these colorful neon works, as well as B, giving us a humorous take on what happens to humans during the quote, dead of winter, which also happens to be the exhibit's title. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> I love your work. And fun fact, all of the neon sculptures were created and installed by a local New York-based custom neon sign shop called The Light Bright Neon. Our next stop of the day is going to be PPOW Gallery to see an exhibit of paintings by Elizabeth Glessner. And at first glance, these works have sort of a similar airbrushed quality to the works we saw earlier by Austin Lee. But she gets this effect by layering oil over poured pigments and then disperses it with water and other various binders. And the subject matter of Glasnow's work is brought about by extreme opposition, by moral codes of society. We're unable to express emotion as we're truly meant to, so Glasnow's forms are meant to be a method of expressing that emotion, of letting it be free in hopes of better understanding it.
We're now heading over to Grimm Gallery to see an exhibit by the London-based artist Michael Raydecker. At first glance, I'll admit, even when I looked at the show online, I thought these just looked like a lovely series of large-scale paintings, but they are actually so much more than that if you take a closer look. Ray Decker creates these multi-dimensional works through a series of steps. He first sketches the work, he then copies it and digitally manipulates it, enlarges it, he prints it out on these large-scale canvases, and then he further manipulates the surface with thread and paint. So this is him actually almost needlepointing the canvases. It should be noted too that many female artists have developed this technique as a response to the male-dominated nature of the art world in an effort, frankly, to elevate what's been traditionally looked at as a female craft. So it's really rare to see a man carrying out this kind of needlework on canvas. And maybe it's a nod to where the culture is moving or where we want the culture to move, to where we don't have to put a certain artistic technique into this binary box of male or female. I always love the walk to Nichelle Bouchine Gallery because you literally feel like you're just going through an alleyway and then boom, there's the gallery.
And this is gonna be the final exhibit of the day. This is a show by Jonathan Baldick. And we've already gotten to see so much variety in terms of materials used by various artists. And this show is no exception. Baldick's works pay tribute to craft and theater and folklore and ritual and how these, quote, processes such as applique and weaving are often overlooked contributions of working class people throughout art history. These ceramic pieces have these really hyper-realistic body parts protruding from them, and they're a reference to Bauhaus theater and the, quote, school's experimental approach to performance based on symbolic and geometric representations of body and spirit. It's almost as if the artist is running around the exhibit, making himself seen from everything from the tapestries on the walls to the ceramics on the pedestals. We've seen a lot of emphasis on the handmade today, whether that be from Meyer's quilts at James Cohen, to Ray Decker's embroidered canvases at Grimm Gallery, to now these works. It makes me wonder, as the world becomes more digitally driven, if we'll see value in the art world shift further towards the side of craft to combat that. Let me know in the comments below if you think that's true or not. I hope you all enjoy this little insight into some of the art exhibits that are on in Tribeca and let me know if there's something that you've seen recently that I should check out and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.